I'm News Nation border correspondent Allie Bradley. You've no doubt seen the headlines about what's happening at the border, but there's so much more that I don't get to share with you during the newscasts. Here is where I'll dive deeper, show you all sides of a topic that's become a political football. This is Bradley on the Border. Children showing up at our southern border alone is such a huge problem and one that just continues to grow. And it has become so urgent and critical that Washington is actually prioritizing conversations about the issue. At the end of July, Republicans grilled DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas in a House Oversight Committee hearing. Now, this isn't the first time Mayorkas has been in the hot seat. Congressman Ben Klein of Virginia, he echoed law enforcement along the border. He's been referring to the border as a porous border, saying there are holes in the border that it is not closed and that it is not secure. The congressman saying that the current policies have damaged efforts to combat human trafficking. Now, one of the things that we've heard Secretary Mayorkas repeatedly say is that they have operational control. So that's kind of a loose term and one that's been debated multiple times in Congress because they're saying that they don't have operational control based on how many people are flowing across the southern border. We're seeing more than 4,000 people come in between the ports every single day still. So when people say that they don't have operational control, that would be under the assumption that the border is completely secure and no one's able to get through. Secretary Mayorkas maintains that no administration has had operational control if that is the determination or the definition, rather, that they're actually going to be using. So the latest DHS data shows that there are 335 children who arrived at our southern border without any family in a single day. That's what has kind of become the norm. The average we're seeing right now through uh, children coming across unaccompanied and getting immediately turned over to HHS custody, that's looking about 283 a day on average right now is what we're looking at. So with that said, in another hot seat was Health and Human Services Secretary Becerra, who was being questioned about unaccompanied children in HHS's Office of Refugee Resettlement Custody. So that is where the children are turned over to. It's a branch of HHS. It's the ORR. And Becerra is saying that ORR has placed more than 83,000 children with vetted sponsors. He says that more than 85% of them with a vetted sponsor were placed with a parent or legal guardian or a close family member. So that means around 15% were placed with a sponsor, right? That isn't necessarily a parent or a legal guardian. Now, Becerra breaks down how a sponsor is vetted. Take a listen. Each sponsor must submit a detailed application giving us information about their identity, their address, their relationship to the child. They must provide additional supporting documents. They must provide us with records, whether it's a birth certificate or whether it's a driver's license. They must go through background checks. They have to go through a home study where we actually send people to talk specifically with the potential sponsor and household members if we need to confirm more information. And oftentimes, we will also do voluntary DNA testing. But we do everything we can to certify, to verify that the people are who they say they are. Now, Arizona Congresswoman Debbie Lesko has been pretty vocal on this topic. She says that she doesn't think HHS, their OR program, is doing an adequate job in vetting the sponsors. Take a listen to what she had to say about a federal grand jury report. Secretary Becerra, I have the requirements here. Um, needed to become a foster parent for dogs and cats through city dogs and city kitties rescue in DC. All the people who want to take a dog or cat into their home need to fill out an application, are interviewed by the rescue shelter, and their home is inspected. Mr. Becerra, does ORR inspect the homes of 100% of the prospective UC sponsors? Congresswoman, thank you for the question. Um, yes I or no, please. A hundred percent. Do you inspect the homes of the UC sponsors? We do a thorough vetting process of any sponsor. Do you, yes or no, a hundred percent of the UC sponsors, sir, do you inspect the homes of the unaccompanied children proposed sponsors? We will often do home studies of Well, I guess that's a no. Sponsors. Uh, if, if you don't, which I assume you don't since you didn't answer yes or no, why is it that dogs and cats that are being foster parent in D.C. homes get a more thorough vetting and their homes are inspected and not the sponsors of unaccompanied children being put into homes. 
Congresswoman, uh, we do a thorough vetting process that includes... Do you inspect all of the homes? We do a thorough vetting process of the individual. You're not answering. Okay, my next question is, in Arizona, an individual seeking to become a foster adoptive parent and all adults living in that same household must pass an FBI and local criminal background check and have a level one fingerprint clearance card issued by the Department of Public Safety. What percentage of sponsors have completed FBI background checks? Uh, every uh, person who wishes to become a sponsor goes through background checks before they can participate what, in our... What percentage have passed a FBI background check? There are any number of background checks that they go through. And could You're not answering again. What DNA, percentage of sponsors have undergone sexual offender registry checks? We do sexual offender checks on anyone who wishes to be a sponsor. A hundred percent. That is one of the checks that we do. A hundred percent on all the sponsors. Any That's person my question. who wishes to be a sponsor has to go through these background checks. So a hundred percent. Is your testimony that a hundred percent of the prospective sponsors get a background check on the FBI background check, the sexual offender registry check? I've, I've answered the question, but I'll say it once again. Every you have person, not answered the question, sir. So, uh, Congresswoman, I have answered your question, but I, I will say it again. Every person who wishes to become a sponsor must go through a background check. It could include uh, fingerprinting. It could include voluntary DNA testing. It, but it certainly includes things like a sexual offender check. It includes it. But you have not answered if 100% of the sponsors are required to pass an FBI background check and a sexual abuse and child abuse neglect registry check. My, my written testimony uh, lists all the things we do to go through the vetting process. If you would like to follow up with further detail, more granular. No, I'd like you to answer the question if 100% of the sponsors have to pass an FBI background check. And as I've said, uh, Congresswoman, Just say yes person, or no. That would be simpler, wouldn't it? I'm answering the question, and the, no, you the haven't. answer is that we make sure that every person who wishes to apply to be a sponsor must go through a rigorous uh, set of tests, including a background check. Well, you haven't said if they have to do an FBI background check. You haven't said if 100% of them have to do a sexual abuse or child uh, abuse, child abuse and neglect registry check as is required in Arizona for foster parents. I mean, so why is it that ORR has different standards for checking than Arizona does for vetting foster parents? Is it because they're unaccompanied children, because they're illegal immigrants? What, what is the reason? And Congresswoman, that is an excellent question because you're equating the program we have with a foster care program, and that's the crux of the problem. We, are, we don't have the same authorities that a foster care program has in your state. We cannot track these kids the way you might want to track I them. didn't say about tracking the kids. I'm just talking about vetting the sponsors. It's the same process. In order to place someone in you foster care. You do have the care, authority. The, that individual, right. that adult, has to go through a process. We Ms. don't have Mr. the same authorities. Mr. Becerra, if you are vetting these sponsors so great, how come, according to the Florida statewide grand jury documents, one single family in Austin, Texas, had more than 100 children sent to it by ORR? Another Texas address had 44 children. A third had 25. In Pennsylvania, one caseworker told the Times he went to check on a child released to a man who had applied to sponsor 20 other minors. I do not think that you are doing an adequate job, and with that, I yield back. Now, there's an internal memo that came out of CBP in May that shows that the expiration of the rapid DNA familial testing contract, that, so that means a company that was actually administering these DNA tests, that contract has ended. That suspends that DNA requirement, right? So Becerra was talking about how a lot of individuals will undergo a voluntary DNA test in that vetting process. Representative Kat Kamak grilled HHS Secretary Becerra at a subcommittee hearing on the topic of the biometrics for children. Listen to what she has to say. She points out a lot of really interesting things here. Turn your attention to the screen real fast. I want to show a, a quick photo uh, that I took 
Uh, it was 11.46 at night. I myself took this photo. That little girl that you see was acting terrified, not of the agents, not of myself, but of the man holding her. The very next day at the Donna Processing Facility, we threatened, and I was there to witness this, this man with a DNA test. He confessed that he actually was not her father, that he had rented her. This is a process called recycling. Now, I know we're here to talk about what happens to these kids after this point, but this little girl was then turned over to HHS custody, your custody, and you've talked at length today about the vetting process, right? And so you now know that this little girl, not through a DNA test, she, she's not related to that man, she now is in your custody, you have your own case managers who are supposed to vet these processes, and we, of course, know this from the Florida Grand Jury. These case managers have very little training or no training in interviewing these individuals, particularly children and young children who have been traumatized. You can imagine that this man who you just saw on the screen, who, by the way, was a convicted sex offender with this child, you can imagine the trauma that that child had sustained. Your own case managers are not trained in examining, evaluating, or recognizing documents as authentic or fake. She came with no documents. They have no uh, official training when it comes to trauma-informed interviewing skills. Uh, no official training when it comes to investigating the safety or legitimacy of addresses to which a UAC may be sent. Now, I don't know what happened to that little girl. But what I do know is that the sponsors that you claim to thoroughly vet, which I would love to get your definition of thorough because you haven't been able to articulate that here today, it also would include the fact that these kids show up with numbers pinned to their clothes or sharpied on their bodies to call. Agents have reported in official testimony that these kids have the numbers, uh, the same phone number t uh, sharpied on their arms time and time again. Now we've heard, of course, of situations where the same sponsor is being called, and magically 20, 30, 40 kids end up with that sponsor. And again, I go back to your statement of we thoroughly vet. You've really emphasized that. Do you vet every member of the household? And does it include an FBI check? Does it include an Interpol check? I would hope that it would, considering that we've had 151 different nationalities cross the southwest border under the Biden administration but I'm guessing that it doesn't, because only 9% of the UACs are subjected to a DNA test with their sponsor, less than 23% to a background check. And again, I should point out for the record the fact that you release these folks, these kids, to sponsors that are in the country illegally. By definition, they have already broken the law. Is it a standard operating policy to release children into the hands of sponsors in households that haven't been properly vetted and that are here in the country illegally? I think I heard a question there, and so I'll try to respond because you packed a lot in there, a lot which I think has a lot of misinformation and that I disagree with. Uh, I could st first start by saying that we do go through a thorough process on assessment of the child when the child first comes to our attention. So that what is your girl, I'm sorry, I'm going to reclaim my time. Secretary, what is your definition of thorough? Uh, I mentioned it in a previous uh, Does it include response? a DNA test? An assessment of the child's No, situation. that is not my question. My question is, does it include a DNA test, yes or no? DNA is one of the tools that we use on occasion. In only 9% of the cases. Does it, it include a, a background we check? Use. We do a number of... Uh, things to go through uh, a series of tests and assessments of a child when we get them. We do and a the background same check in only 23% of the cases. So we're looking at about 8,200 unaccompanied children in HHS's ORR custody, according to the agency's recent reporting. Now, former DHS special agent Tim Ballard who works to fight child trafficking, has really dedicated his life to it. Of course, he is the, uh, the person that the Sound of Freedom is really based on. Well, he talked about how children are being exploited by the cartels at our southern border on News Nation's Morning in America. You know, I worked for 10 years of my 12 years as a special agent. I was on the southern border, and we used that border to rescue people, to rescue children. We used border enforcement to rescue children. The United States is the number one consumer of child sex uh, material in the world. And so when when you have tens of thousands of unaccompanied children being dropped off and lost into the belly of that, that's scary. 
And then in late July, a person from Mexico was busted up in Michigan in the Detroit sector. They were trying to traffic an underage girl for sexual exploitation. That's according to Border Patrol. Now, the agency is reporting that the person was here in the United States illegally after overstaying their visa. The arrest was made in Charlevoix County, which is in kind of the northwest portion of that state. Now, what's really awful here is that sources tell me that these children who are coming across alone are often sent across the southern border alone. And they're used for family reunification later, or this is a terrible thing to even have to think about. Sometimes they're recycled. What that means is that the children are basically used for a fee to help send single adult men and sometimes single adult women as well cross into the United States. Now, this lack of DNA testing, obviously a big sticking point for lawmakers. Many echoed that the testing needs to be done. It shouldn't be a voluntary process. All children should be going through this. What else is interesting here to note is that neither the Trump administration nor the Biden administration has actually conducted mandatory testing of DNA testing and biometrics, which include facial scanning and uh, retina scans as well and fingerprinting, that's not being done on children under 14. That hasn't been done. Now, with the expiration of this DNA uh, familial testing contract, when I've talked to Border Patrol and ICE sources, here's what I'm being told from them. One person saying, quote, I've never done testing specifically to see familial DNA. If they say they're family or related, then they are. Swabbing for DNA is not protocol. Another source saying it's ridiculous that they stop this. If anything, it should have been put on steroids. It's a win-win to determine familial ties as well as having DNA for migrants as they await removal hearings. It's an added level of security. So that is some of the conversation that is being had when it comes to unaccompanied children at the southern border. Obviously a conversation that is continuing on and is being perpetuated by that movie, The Sound of Freedom. And so agents and people on the front lines, people on the ground are continuously saying these conversations need to be elevated, need to be had, and that certain procedures need to be put back in place or they need to figure out a more humane way for this to all happen so that the children aren't victims here. To see what I'm up to next, make sure you tune into News Nation. Don't know where to watch us? Easy. Go to www.joinnn.com, enter your zip code, and the channel finder will show you the broadcast channel to find us on. But don't forget, we're also on all the streamers, Hulu, Roku, and YouTube TV. Now, if you have an angle I need to cover, shoot me a message at abradley at newsnationnow.com. Until next time, this is News Nation's Allie Bradley. And you've been listening to Bradley on the Border.